What is going on guys? Welcome back to the next day here, the next video here on the Lawn Proud channel. We got the nasty red flatbed 12 out Cummins, compound turbos, demonica red paint, all this stuff. And 30 times entries are live, but they are ending Sunday, this Sunday, May 28th, which could be like tomorrow or today, or I don't know, just check your calendar because it is almost here and almost that time between now and that time, you can get 30 times entries towards winning this beautiful, flatbed 12 out Cummins we call Nasty 2.0 plus $5,000 in cash. Highest bonuses are live right now. Every $1, 30 entries, best deal. Get in while you can, ends this Sunday. So if you saw in yesterday's video here, we were dealing with replacing a front steering stabilizer, dampener, bar, whatever, on the Nasty 12 out Cummins, which is right here. We had to grind it off, stick an impact on this to get it out of the tie rod. Um, it was not the funnest of things. Not that complicated. I just did not have the idea to do that as soon as I should have. So we wasted a lot of time trying to, as you can see, hit it with a hammer out. And it was just so seized up. That was just an absolute waste of time. So long story short, we got it out. But in the process of getting that taken out, we had destroyed the nut on this track bar. And then by the time we got the track bar released and out of there and pried out of there, the dust cover was completely shot. And not only that, but we realized that this thing is legitimately, it has no, like, there's no resistance in that at all. It is just completely, I mean, it is just completely, totally loose. So that is getting replaced with this baby right here. Brand new track bar. I had the wife pick up this morning in town. And we're going to be putting the grease zerk on that, giving it a couple pumps of the grease gun just to make sure it is full of grease. And then swapping this thing up into the truck there and hopefully taking it before we drive down the road. So that is going to be the goal this morning. It shouldn't be a hard process, okay? We thought yesterday's video was going to be a super simple process, pulling that old steering dampener off. And it should have been, but it just didn't end up being that way. Usually when you're putting new parts in, it goes a whole lot smoother than when you're trying to get old stuff off of a truck that maybe has never been replaced. And I have a feeling that's probably the original track bar that was just never replaced. So hopefully this going back up in is a whole lot simpler and doesn't give us any kinds of issues. Let's get to hopping down onto the truck, getting this thing installed. Okay guys, so here is the cotter pin and nut here for the top portion here of the track bar. Uh, I did chew up the paint a little bit with a hammer when I was um, having to get the old track bar off by trying to hit the nut on top of there to loosen it up. Not on the new one, of course the old one when I was trying to bop it out of there and We'll have to touch the paint back up there on the frame a little bit. We did get that off and then the new one put on there. If you're looking under here, you can see new steering dampener, stabilizer, whatever you want to call it. And then of course, the new track bar you can see under there. Now this went from being a, let's do a 25 minute steering dampener replacement to ending up being a full day of trying to get one part off, actually two parts off, steering dampener off and replaced along with the old track bar getting pulled off and replaced. And so now we're ready to take this thing down the road and see how she does. Just to kind of put a little bit of faith behind the work, that's kind of just a step in the process, get stuff replaced, take it down the road, see how it steers, see how it drives. I wouldn't mind seeing how the steering is different, hopefully with the new steering dampener and that one being a bigger heavy duty one. So we'll see about that. And then on top of that, the new track bar, just wanna make sure that of course it doesn't have any weird wobbles or shakes going down the road. <laughs> Bad track bar, bad steering dampener, 
get a bad ball joints, bad wheel bearings, bad tie rods. I mean, there's a lot of different small components that can make your steering look suck because a lot of those things can kind of play into that factor or factor into that steering wheel play. But so far, um, I'm a steering wheel way tighter. I mean, it's way different. Like, noticeably different. I don't know how many of you guys remember any of the videos of us driving this truck and you know you ever see me with the steering wheel I mean typical second gen stuff if you got loose parts in the front end I mean the steering wheel just like you know you could usually bounce the wheel side to side and the truck can still drive totally straight like it's just a lot of sloppy steering you know and I mean it seems like anywhere you move the wheel even just a little bit the truck's turning the truck's moving so I mean it's pretty good to me I mean it's still got just like a little bit of I mean guys it's, it's 1996 you know this isn't like the most advanced electronic steering where it's like motor driven it's super ultra sensitive I mean this is like for a second gen if you can take your hand off the wheel or try to bounce it and it doesn't really bounce the steering wheel will actually turn the front tires of the truck you're doing pretty good I've done this before on my grandfather's truck. This is just a bunch of used motor oil. It actually came out of one of our other giveaway trucks. And what I do is I just keep it all because these diesels hold a lot of oil. And when you do your oil change, I keep this used oil. And again, do this at your own discretion. It's not recommended. Just want you to be clear, it's not recommended to do. If you do it in the right manner, it's really worthwhile. It really protects your truck from rusting out for many, 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 many years. Today we're not gonna be like coating the entire frame and stuff like that, but we're gonna be spraying some oil inside the doors, inside the rockers, inside the cab corners. That way, hopefully, inside the cab mounts, that way, hopefully, this truck can stay rust-free for years and years to come. Because for the most part, it's only got like one little rust spot on it where the paint was chipped off and we kind of fixed it, so-so. But we wanna be able to keep this truck from rusting out. And this is literally, other than the container, is literally a free, preventative maintenance type of thing. It's used oil, comes out of your truck, you gotta change your oil anyways. Save the used oil, mix it with a little diesel if you want. Don't use gasoline, it's a bad idea. Because diesel's a good lubricant as well to thin it out, but it's not as flammable. So like if it hits your exhaust and it's up to temp, it's a lot harder for diesel to actually ignite than it would be gasoline. So never, ever, ever use gasoline to thin out your oil. Um, and don't get it on like exhaust and stuff like that. Don't, try, don't get it on anything that is gonna get really hot and could cause a fire hazard, okay? Um, but today we're just gonna be doing rocker panels, cap corner, and doors. I'm gonna show you what we did. Plugs on the back doors, and there's plugs on all the doors. They're all just in a little bit different spot, a little bit different, you know, sizes. Take this oil, and just, all I'm doing is spraying this oil all over in here. And the reason I'm doing that is 
the oil residue will like stick to the inside of this door for a long time and it'll actually help preserve this door from rotting out because these things are notorious for rotting out bad all along the bottom and you want to have these drain holes intact for like water and stuff you don't water you don't want water building up in there and then it causing a bunch of problems but like even here you could like pull this plug off here and oil it all the way down um, but the whole point of that is to hopefully keep these doors this lower half of these doors that are known for rotting out keep them from rotting out and i'm just going to do that leave the doors open let it drip dry and then wipe off the residue at the bottom when i'm done rubber plugs in a couple different spots you can actually pull these out. There's already drain holes at the bottom of the rockers anyways. Set them to the side and oil these things up. There's a couple of these. And if you do that, again, same type of deal, it will hopefully keep these rocker panels and cat corners and stuff from freaking rusting out so bad. I'm gonna pull the one out up here. And you can also, there's actually holes in the back sides of these as well. I'm just doing it from both sides just in case I hit something here that I can't get to on the back side. Oops. Plug back in. Easy enough. Give a little pinch. Just push this right in there. So if you look at this truck, this thing is really, really clean for being an Ohio truck. But if you want to keep it that way. This is part of the process. There's all these holes in the backs of the rockers and I just shoot oil in there. Twist it side to side, just shoot oil in there until you see it starting to drip out way down there. There you go. And that's how you know you got everything between this port and that port covered. Do the same thing. Go down here, do the same thing again. Spray oil in, twist it side to side. And I'm gonna do that until I see it coming out way down there on the other side. Side to side, just give it a good spray. Guys, we did the rockers and cap corners and all we did was pump oil in there until we saw it dripping out of all the seams, which there are like little drain seams, that way like water and stuff doesn't build up in there. The oil, is just supposed to like run across, coat everything, and it like sticks and bonds to the metal pretty well. And that whatever oil transmission fluid, whatever that stuff has in it, sticks into the metal and like really preserves it long term. We did fill the cab mounts. We filled the frame, every hole in the frame where there was just a factory hole, not rust holes, factory holes. We just stuck the nozzles in there and just sprayed it full of oil until we saw oil dripping out of holes in the frame and other locations further down. We got all up around the front end here, stuck the nozzle like up in here and I got it way up behind here and filled it all up in oil until it was dripping out down in the front frame horn and dripping out way down there behind the upper and lower patrol arms. Filled the coil buckets down low, filled those with oil, just oiled those up like crazy. And the frame on her truck is already super clean. This truck was originally from Florida. So it was already a really clean truck. There's not like rocker rust, cab corner rust, frame rust. This, uh, this thing was already super clean. But now that it's not in Florida and it's up here in central Ohio, we're just trying our best to preserve it as long as possible. Even if she doesn't keep this truck forever, I'm a firm believer that for the 15 minutes it takes you to do this, if you can prevent the truck from rusting out as bad as it might otherwise rust, it's gonna just help with the resale value, if nothing else, um, when you go to sell it. Just cause when it comes to these trucks especially, finding one with no rust up where we live is pretty hard to do. So people are willing to pay a premium to find one that's not needing to be all patched up. Just cause you know, a truck from 2007, usually they're pretty rusty by now if you drive them in the winter around here. So anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. Do not forget, if you wanna enter to win Nasty Road 2.0, 30 times entries are max entry multipliers live right now, but it ends on Sunday, May 28th at 1159 PM. So if you want to grab our highest entry multiplier of the entire giveaway for Nasty Red, right now is your time and it ends Sunday night. So hit the link in the description below, lmpgear.com, place an order and every $1, 30 entries to win 
and there's free bonuses on the site right now. You can spin the wheel and get up to X amount of bonus entries. You just have to go check it out if you want to see the deals. It's pretty sick, and then those are going to be disappearing when 30X ends, and that'll be it. So, anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.